Hey there, it's Lenny McGill with the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop right here in San Diego, California. And today is another custom gun to look at. And this one is for a very good customer who's done a lot of work with us. And I want to say thank you, Chris, out there in Tennessee, you know who you are. Thank you for being a customer. You're, you know, one of our uh, favorite guys when you call and we've done uh, a couple things for you. And here is your custom gun that we've built. And it is pretty darn cool. Now, this is your Glock. Gen 4 G17 or G17 Gen 4. Uh, we've done an extensive amount of work here to kind of transform it into this race gun that you're looking at. And it's pretty darn awesome. All right, so let's start with the frame. And probably the most obvious thing you're going to see uh, is the uh, starburst or sunburst stipple job. And that's basically what's happening there. You can notice how it comes from the center and emanates out and it's pretty darn cool. We complement that with your standard stippling on the back strap here. All right, and the cool thing about all this is that it really does give you a better grip. The other thing Chris had us do was to um, enhance the finger grooves and make them a little bit tighter. So really two things happen here. One, because we make them a little bit deeper, if you have a little smaller hand, you can definitely get a stronger grip on this thing, a better grip. Two, no matter what, you really get locked into the gun with those enhanced finger grooves. So that really helps you get a grip on it and your fingers aren't running up and down. Also, you'll notice the uh, standard stippling there. And the stippling kind of goes up and around, just kind of complement and, and make it look like it's complete. The other thing you'll notice on the frame right away are the uh, Glock knuckle cut and the trigger undercut. Knuckle cut is for the Glock knuckle. It's, it's a notorious thing. So on the middle finger, as you grip the gun, your knuckle has a tendency to get kind of a callus after a little bit of shooting, after you know maybe a full day of uh, shooting uh, a match or something like that, a couple hundred rounds, 300 rounds, you're going to notice there's a little bit of uh, pressure there. Uh, if you do that you know, two or three days in a row, all of a sudden you've got a callus building up, and that's called the Glock knuckle. So we developed a Glock knuckle cut years ago, which basically scallops that out a little bit and gets you a little higher grip on the gun. Now, that's important for a lot of reasons. One, obviously, you have more control of the recoil, but also it helps reduce or almost eliminate <clears throat> your Glock knuckle callus. The other thing we have is that trigger undercut. You can see how that offhand wraps right there. It gives it a place to rest. And now I can really get a good firm grip of that left hand onto my right hand. And just to uh, reiterate the grip technique is we want to be able to put that left hand right there, some meat inside right there on the, uh, the, uh, uh, the visible part of this frame. A little bit of meat there, and then I want to squeeze that left hand around the right hand. So I want to control the right hand with my left hand and leave that trigger finger nice and loose so I can manipulate the trigger. And the faster I can squeeze the trigger, the faster I can shoot. So that's the uh, technique there. Now, also, the big mouth magwell and uh, the magazine button on the bottom. Uh, that gives us, magazine uh, extension on the bottom, gives us four or five extra rounds of 9 millimeter. Five extra rounds of 9, four extra rounds of 40. Uh, the magwell allows you to load a little faster. All right? So it's very important to keep that in mind. Uh, obviously, the mags drop out freely, so as you're running and gunning, you can come up and foam and go. All right? The technique there is to bring that gun up in front of your face and reload right here. Don't try to do it down here. Don't try to do it out here. Get your hands close to your body so as you come up from the... Uh, the magazine pouch, you're up here and your finger is basically indexing on the front. You're coming up and bang, right there it is. So you turn and, and I, the, the, the fastest guys, the best guys, bring that, that gun right up to their face. So you're here, boom, and then you're back out. So here, boom, seat and go back out. The reason is you're faster. You know, if you're out here, you're going to fumble a little bit. You're just not as comfortable. It, the closer you are, the more dexterity you have with your hands, your body, your whole feeling of it. So bring the gun back, insert and go, all in one motion. Let's see. What are we going to talk about? I got the frame for you. got that for you. Let's talk about the color because this is a unique Cerakote color. It's called Sniper Gray, and it's pretty cool. It's almost blue but it's sniper gray. Depends on how you look at it. And it kind of matches the whole motif that he's got going here, the silver and gray. 
uh, but it's very subtle. And uh, I actually like this color a lot. We see it you know, more and more lately because, well, we've been showing it on guns and people look at it and say, I like that. <laughs> so that's why a lot of people like it. On the other side, you're gonna see that we've complemented the extended controls with the Sniper Gray. So we've got the extended slide stop lever in Sniper Gray, the slide lock lever in Sniper Gray, and your pin kit in Sniper Gray, and the uh, magazine release button in Sniper Gray as well. So these are all pretty cool things that he has done to make this gun, you know, kind of a theme and make it look good. On the top, uh, we have a Mako cut slide, and that's obviously pretty darn attractive. And he's got a compensator on his nine millimeter barrel. This is a Barstow nine millimeter threaded barrel with a compensator. Compensator is gonna do two things. It's gonna reduce the recoil because, well, one of the weight itself, but also the, it shoots gases up. And um, because of that, you will be able to shoot faster and literally more accurately as far as your group. So when you come up on a target and you double tap, that's out, there's really, very minimal movement of the gun, not, not a lot of jumpiness. It's only a nine millimeter. And because of that, you know, it, it really makes a big difference. Now, this one also has our tungsten guide rod. And the tungsten guide rod is also heavier than the plastic guide rod. And let's see if I can get you a look at that guy. There it is. And because of that, it helps reduce recoil as well. Now, the one thing I will tell you is that we have reduced the power of the spring here a little bit to make sure that it does, in fact, cycle. Because when you have a compensator sometimes, you typically want to use a little lighter spring because it's going to enable, uh, it's going to reduce some of that felt recoil, which does actually uh, interfere with some of the, uh, the cycling unless you have a lighter spring. So keep that in mind when you use a compensator. Typically, you have to have a lighter spring. The other thing here in the frame that we should talk about is the pyramid trigger. And the pyramid trigger, uh, as most of you know now, is um, a very popular item for us, and it allows you to shoot faster and more accurately. And when people say, well, how does the trigger help you shoot more accurately? Well, there's, there's a reason for it. One, because it's a shorter throw, and because it's a lighter trigger pull, you're less likely to disturb the sight picture as you pull the trigger. And most accuracy problems are, are caused by manipulation of the trigger. You know, the gun's always moving a little bit. So as you get the sights lined up, if you have less motion here, it only stands to reason that you would have less chance to pull the trigger or pull the gun off in direction uh, that's away from your sight picture. So that's really important to remember why the pyramid trigger helps. They also look pretty cool too. This is our uh, flat face and it's a black, black, red. So black on the spine, Black on the insert and red on the safety. And that's what's black, black, red. And I will tell you that I have been shooting, you know, the pyramid trigger for many years. I recently installed the flat face into my gun, my 34. And um, I've been killing it with that darn thing. I mean, I'm super fast. I had my fastest times uh, on one of our gun fit courses just yesterday uh, with a flat face uh, trigger. And I hadn't shot in a while. I've been traveling a little bit. And so I just thought to myself, wow, that, you know, that, that, that trigger just felt so good. So when you get your trigger, you will know what I'm talking about. Okay, the other thing that obviously stands out here is this red dot optic. And, you know, I, I've been using the term red dot optic for many, many years. And I have to be honest, it's no longer accurate because this dot in here is actually amber. <laughs> uh, so it's really a reflex, uh, illuminated reflex optic or sight. Um, the uh, red dot concept is, is old school because when they first came out, they all had red dots. And now we're seeing green dots and circle dots and uh, triangles. And this amber is kind of unique to um, uh, Trijicon. This is a Trijicon. It's a dual illuminated sight, which means that it actually works with this fiber optic panel, kind of a solar type thing. It, it, it's not charging the battery. It's just transferring light onto the glass from this panel. It's pretty cool. Uh, the, um, uh, this particular setup is co-witnessed with the Trijicon, or oh, these are True Glow. No, they're Trijicon, yeah. Trijicon suppressor sights. And so if you look right down the pipe, 
you can see. Now, there's that amber dot. You know, now, you know, let's see if I can, there it is. See that? Now, that dot gets blown up by the video camera. It's interesting why, why it's so big. I always wonder what happens there, but let's see right there it is. But that's the co-witness concept. You're able to see through the glass. Again, when you look at the dot, it's a small little dot. For whatever reason, the video camera kind of blows it up into a big one. So co-witness sites with the red dot. And these are suppressor sites. You can see how tall they stand. And because of that, they actually are able to see through, through the glass. Normal sites are not tall enough. So if you want to do that co-witness, which is a pretty cool idea because the dot will sit really basically right on the top of the front sight. If you want to do that, you have to use the suppressor sites. Now we have like two or three different options. Trigicon being one of the best ones. And these are night sites. You can see the little, uh, little dots in there. They glow in the nighttime. Pretty simple, but you know, always effective. They glow for 10 years. Uh, and they do die and you have to change them. And people say, you know, after 10 years, they say, well, hey, my sights are dead. Well, okay, you got 10 years. Next. <laughs> That's what it is. It's 10 years of life. Uh, no batteries required, but it's 10 years of life. And let's not forget the, uh, the slide cover plate. Custom design that, you know, we've got a, a bunch of them. But, you know, the other thing to remember, too, is you can put your own design on there. So if you have something cool you want to put there, we can definitely do it. All right. <clears throat> There's that uh, custom Glock for Chris. He's been waiting for a little while. So he's going to be happy to get it. And we're happy to get it done. Now, the key is if you have a custom Glock that you're looking to do, you know, something that is unique. If you see something on one of these videos you like, you say, hey, I like that MP3 finish or I like such and such or whatever, you know, that's where you give us a call. You can say, hey, I, I, this is, you know, I want to build something like that, but I want to use this gun or I want to do this color. I, I want the color of the trigger to be different. I don't want this sniper gray. I want something else. That's what it's all about. It's really about custom work. You know, this... Um, uh, this business is fun because, you know, while we do make a lot of pieces and parts and they sit on the shelf, all these guns like this are truly custom. I mean, this is so custom that Chris actually had us do some laser engraving here. It's really a small little piece, and um, I'm sure it means something to him. But uh, that must be some mark that means something to him. It's very subtle, but it's laser engraved. It's kind of, you know, it's, it's inside the metal there. That's not going to scratch off. That's not a, a, a sticker. That's actually engraved. So this is going to last for a long time for this gentleman, and he's going to be one happy camper. And I'm one happy camper if he's happy. Chris, thank you again, and thank you guys for watching. If you got a custom build you want to do, well, just give us a call. It's that simple. We'll help you, you know, figure it out. We'll help you budget it out. We'll help you, you know, with all the processes. You send it in, we get it all done, and we send it back to you. We'll test fire it first. We'll have some fun doing that. But, like I said, this is a fun business. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.